guys. So we would then put their bob weight together, just like we already have all these bob weights put together. You need to locate it on the crankshaft. And what we're trying to do is we always get that number one rod throw right straight up and down. There's a little bit more art than science here. There is some different kind of bob weights that you can use that you can uh, uh, build with. And so we have this one, because there is a full round bob weight, which is a pretty neat deal. And because they're actually trying to get away probably from having any windage out here, but let's keep that, <laughs> keep that in mind still, windage. And see that post-it note, how much that weighs. And it's just a piece of nothing. All right. So uh, each one of these things is going to go on at 90 degrees from each other. Because obviously it's 90. So we square this up. Go to the next one. That's it. Leveled off. Do the same. Do the same. So they're all 90 degrees away from each other. Same orientation. So everything is similar to each other. All right. Now... We have the crankshaft, we have the bob weights in there. We need to go through and you're gonna enter in all the information. The machine needs to know how far away the bearing is from the other bearing, 19 inches on this small block. What our tolerance is, that's what the machine needs to know. And then it's gonna uh, do it in a force or plane. Uh, it's always in a plane because we're on two different sides right here. All right, so everything's all set up. The machine is ready to balance. We've already gone over what our bob weight is, how we make that bob weight, what that bob weight means, and our overbalance and underbalance. So we're a standard conventional 50% bob weight. This works the best to do this from when I was in NHRA Pro Stock, a long time ago, to doing uh, Pro Modified style mowers, uh, big blowers, big horsepower, big turbo stuff. This stuff works perfectly. Okay? so. We're gonna balance this at 500 RPM. That is a typical standard balancing RPM. You can balance it some other RPMs. It does not seem to have any bearing. If the machine is good, it's gonna balance at 500 RPM and pick up the balance as much as it does at 700 RPM or 1000 RPM. Now, <clears throat> when you see how fast this is actually turning, you'll see 500 RPM is a lot. So imagine what's going on when this thing is at 1000 RPM, not even idling. Imagine what this thing is at, at 10,000 RPM, how fast stuff is moving. So this is at 500 RPM. What the machine is now doing is, there's load sensors that are in each one of these columns. So it is picking up any type of vibration, any kind of movement that is uh, outside its range, that it measures that. So we can see right here that we are 41 grams out in the front. We're 25 grams out, 24.5 grams out in the rear. Now it's also, this is a position indicator that's telling us what position we need to be at. So we come up here and we're gonna do uh, add because I know it needs to be added to. All positions are at 12 o'clock. So straight up and down is where it's giving you the calculation at or straight down below because the load sensor is right there all right so we come over here it says yep I want to add 41 grams 41.4 grams at this position which is right here at the exact 12 or 12 uh, spot now because this crankshaft was already balanced it's a used crankshaft that we're changing the piston uh, piston into. We're, and you can see that all we did was change piston. So whenever this was balanced from before, there was actually a 20, almost a 20 gram difference front to rear because our pistons are all the way the same. We're using the exact same connecting rod, everything he already had. So it should have been the same front to rear. So whoever did the balance on it before was 20 grams off front to rear. So what we wanna do is we're going to add weight and since it's really hard to figure out how to add weight, if it was asking us to remove weight, we'd come over here to the drill. We'd come right to the spot. We would machine a nice hole, sneak up on it, get close, come back over here, get close, come back over here, get closer, 
come back over here, get closer yet. Uh, or we can put it up in a lathe and we can do uh, balance the counterweight by machining all the counterweight. Uh, we can machine uh, inside this hole here, this uh, this plane, this plane, or this plane. Doesn't really it. This plane does the most. This plane does the least. Now this is all also. Uh, very few things in the world are externally balanced anymore. All good race engine stuff is always internally balanced, so we don't have to have the balancer. We don't have to have the flywheel or flex plate out here. Um, those things are neutral balance, which means uh, good quality stuff is always uh, no weight to it. It is, uh, it's perfectly balanced. It's just a round piece of machined material for the, the flex plate. It's a round piece of machined uh, on a lathe uh, balancer. There's no sense even putting it on here. You can if you want to. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But we never remove or add material on the balancer or the flex plate. You always do it in the crankshaft because we want to be able to change the balancer. We want to be able to change the flex plate without having it be go in and rebalance everything. So that's why you always do all your balancing in the crankshaft, not on the flex plate, not on the flywheel, not on the balancer. We want to be able to just interchange those. That's why zero weight stuff, internally balanced, is all interchangeable. We can change. We can put 50 different balancers on here, and it's never going to change the balance of the crankshaft because the manufacturer has made the balancer zero. Okay, so we know that now that we've made our bob weights, we've spun this up. We are now going to start making our correction, and since this thing is asking us to add weight, we can't just easily do that and sneak up on it. So I like to simulate it by just a simple little thing like this. What this material is that you see right here, these uh, little different color. Now this is used, so these were already in there. And there's one here. That's called Mallory metal. Now Mallory metal, or heavy metal, is heavier than what the steel is by quite a bit. There's some charts and we have everything to figure that all out, but if we need to add metal, we don't weld on stuff. We don't weld pieces in there and do all. That's a lower end way of doing things. So what we always do is we have to take, we simulate what weight needs to be there. We'll show you the simulation. So this is 40 grams and we're calling for uh, 41 and a half grams. Let's add here, see what this does. That's 44. I think we're going to actually just test it with this first. And I can show you what it's going to be. So we're going to put 40.6 grams. Right where it's asking us to. Right where we would end up machining a different piece of round Mallory metal that will press into this crankshaft. And it presses in this way. Impossible for any weight to come out as the crankshaft's rotating around if it is pressed in from the side. Now if somebody comes in here and they just weld a hole shut, uh, a lot of times what will happen or can happen is that thing will actually, uh, I've seen pieces of weld fly off of it from the centrifugal force, fly off of it, shoot through the oil pan and oil down your track, i.e. oil down the tires, probably put you in a guardrail. Okay, so that's why we always want to do put Mallory metal in from the side if we need to add weight, we use Mallory metal in from the side. So you come and take a look at that again, you can see that there is no way for that thing to come out. It's, we press it in there, and then most often, I'll actually add a little bit of weld on the outside here just for added, added security that even when we press it in, a little bit of weld there to make sure that that thing is never gonna slide back and forth. Okay, so we put 40 grams here. Now we rotate this over to where it tells us to take and add, whoops, I forgot to tighten it up. All right, this time I remembered to tighten the thing back up. So we go to the back of the crankshaft, go to where it's telling us to put it, right there. So we're, again, we're simulating this bolt. We know weighs 24.2, it's asking us for 24.5. We're going to simulate and put that in there, right in this spot. Right at 12 o'clock. 
I will tighten this up and we are going to spin this crankshaft and then take a look at it again. All right, so now we've added simulated weight in front, simulated weight in the back, what the machine's asking us to do. And I'll tell you a top secret thing here. Uh, the machine is giving you a reference number. It is never, I have never yet in 25 years had a machine tell me put 25 grams right here and I put 25 grams right there and it was exactly right. I was all done. It never does that. Always sneak up on this stuff. Uh, you are measuring twice, cutting once. All right, so go ahead and we're gonna re-spin this thing. It's gonna rate, run it right back up to 500 RPM. It's measuring as we're looking at it. It's analyzing the data that it's collecting. And here in a second, it'll pop up what it is out of balance. Now we can see that it is still eight grams out of balance in the rear and six grams out of balance in the front. So I know now that we're gonna add a little bit more material there. I'm not gonna show you how to how we get this thing all the way done because all you're gonna do is what end up watching me drill holes and press a piece of material in. So we're gonna add a little bit of weight there when we do the final balance on this. Add a little bit of weight there. Then we have to re-spin it all up after we put the final piece in there, after we TIG it in, after everything's there. Then we have to come in and do it all over again and check this thing all out. Now, one last thing. So we've gone through a bob weight. We've gone through how you balance that crankshaft, what the numbers all mean. Uh, this eight grams and six grams. Remember me talking about this piece of paper weighing eight gram, or weighing a gram, basically? This stupid post-it note. <clears throat> Let me ask you, what do you, and, and we know that we can put an overbalance in it or underbalance in it, which was gonna be about 20 grams either way. Do you really think this will probably get everybody's panties in a bunch that are overthinkers that work at uh, AutoZone and don't actually build engines or whatever they do? Uh, do you think that really matters? I'm here to tell you, it don't. You know what's going on inside this crankshaft and inside the crankcase when there's oil flat splashing around, oil coming through the connecting rod, getting shed off, all the windage, everything that's all there. It is a pretty amazing deal. So we can just put the, I was gonna actually show you something there with like even just spraying this thing down with oil. It just, everything changes. So we're doing, this is the pragmatic way of doing things. I'm showing you not just theory, of what's supposed to be doing of what's supposed to be done i'm showing you this stuff works because we do it every day i prove it out all the time so i want to help you always understand how things actually work and how things are actually done so anyways that's how this all works and how balancing works what you're looking for if you have any other questions but this this should give you a good idea of what uh you know, when we have to take this crankshaft in and out of the machine a couple times, prices go up to put Mallory metal in, to put that heavy metal in. If it's a quick, easy balance job, only takes us maybe an hour or two hours at the most. Uh, big balance jobs like this, where we're taking Mallory metal in and out, it could take a few hours in order to get this thing right. So that's why it costs a lot more too. So anyways, I think you got a real good idea of how balancing works. I'm Steve at Steve Tech. Take her easy.